guys welcome back to my channel my name is Nima for those of you guys that are new so I'm gonna go ahead and just jump straight into this video you guys know I don't like those long ass intros so today we're gonna be reviewing the new Laura Mercier honey it's a new shade of their translucent powder that just came out I have actually tried regular Laura Mercier I think it was just the translucent shade and then I've tried the medium deep which I kind of liked but my the undertone wasn't my favorite so I'm gonna be trying that out today today's video is sponsored by Pat McGrath I'm gonna be using a bunch of their goodies on my eyes including their new dark star mascara how it compares to one of my absolute not even one probably my most favorite mascara which is their fetishize mascara I was obsessed with this thing when it came out and you guys know I have tiny baby lashes so when it comes to mascara it's either a hit or a big miss for me and most of the time it's misses because my lashes are so little and um, since I have deeper skin tones it's harder for mascara to pop on my skin tone so it needs to be really really dark like a really dark black mascara um, so I've really been loving the fetishize but today I'm gonna be showing you guys the new dark star and see how it compares to the Fetishize. So let's go ahead and jump straight in. I'm gonna start by priming with the Giorgio Armani Luminous Silk um, Hydrating Primer. This one has quickly, and I mean quickly, become one of my favorite primers. Just like that. Also, you guys, we had two casualties today, this week actually. On my hands, I broke two fingernails. You guys remember how long my nails were? I broke two fingernails. It was the pointer fingers. I broke them one day and then I broke the other one the next day. And I was just so sad. I'm having to start over. It will probably take me about two or three months to get back to where I was. But that's okay, you know. It happens. So that's that. Cute. I always love to use like a pore filling primer just in my T-zone area. I know you guys are going to come for me. But I see it. I see it. So um, I'm going to go ahead and use the Oma Liwa High Definition Foundation Primer. I am no longer going to tolerate any reflective skin slander on my channel. It's not happening at all. I have shiny reflective skin when it's hydrated, and I love it. Like, everyone's always like, it's so shiny, it's so greasy. Your skin is so shiny, it's almost greasy. I make sure it's hydrated. And anyways, dark skin sometimes just can be really reflective. It is what it is. The foundation I haven't used in a very long time. This is the Lancome Tint Idol Ultra Wear. I have it in the shade 560 Suede C. I forgot why. Well, actually, no, I didn't forget. Now I remember why I, didn't, I don't use this foundation. It's very neutral compared to the Pure Love Your Selfie. The Tint Idol is the one next to it. I can definitely make it work. I mean, I made it work for years, okay? Lancome was the GOAT for years. There's just been better matches that have came out, and that's okay. Not everything is gonna be a match, but at least it's in the same family range, same color range, you know? There's some companies that aren't even trying that. Set my T-zone with the Oma Liwa powder. This powder, y'all has just been doing some things. Jackie was the one that made this technique really mainstream. So I couldn't really do it because the powder would look crazy underneath my foundation. <laughs> now that I have a powder that's more closer to my skin tone, it actually doesn't look that bad. So I'm gonna go ahead and go in with my Pure Love Your Selfie foundation. I'm gonna start blending that out. I do find that using the powder before foundation technique, I do use a lot less foundation. I'm not sure if that's something that's like a normal thing, but I don't mind it. I feel like it's less foundation. I still get a good amount of coverage. Yeah, skin. Now I'm gonna take this beauty sponge. This is from Remsco Creations. I think this is a black owned business as well. I got a few sponges from them that I wanted to try out. These three, but end of this black beauty blender. Just make sure everything's nice and pressed in. It looks like I don't even have anything on. I was able to use such little foundation, which is crazy. Actually, not even crazy. I like it. So next we've got some new Makeup Forever Matte Velvet Skin Concealers. So if you guys have seen my Matte Velvet Skin Foundation review, I love that foundation. It wore like a dream for 24 hours. And I mean, I really tested it for 24 hours. That was crazy. So I'm gonna use the shade 5.5. The shade range could be better Makeup Forever. I'm not even gonna lie. Like this is a pretty good jump. Also, this concealer is what I would almost consider 
using as a highlight concealer. It's a little lighter than I'd like it to be. The coverage though, I can already tell that this is gonna be a very full coverage concealer. I'm gonna contour with Fenty Caviar. Oh, that's kind of nice. That blend. This is blending out so easily. Wow, such a nice blend. And the color, I'm like actually not mad at this color. Like the shade that I'm using, I'm really not mad at the shade. When I first applied it, it was gonna be too bright underneath my eyes as a starter concealer shade because I didn't even color correct. But it actually looks really good. To brighten, I do have the next shade up, which is 5.4. Now we got the powder. This is medium deep and it has that, see how it has that really golden undertone? That wasn't my favorite undertone for my skin tone. If I had to choose, I'd rather go neutral before I go golden just because my undertones are more red. That is why I haven't been, I like it and I could use it if I really, 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 really wanted to, but I mean, I prefer more of that neutral undertone. So that's why I wasn't the biggest fan of medium deep. There it is. Since this is a new powder, I also wanted to review it for us out here that have deeper skin tones. So let's go ahead and go into this powder. Oh, it's brightening. It's definitely brightening, which is not bad. I don't mind brightening as long as it doesn't look ashy. This could definitely be a really good like last step powder. Like if you don't like a lot of brightening, but you want just that little extra pick me up at the end of your powder routine, this will definitely do that for you. Cause look how much brightness I'm getting out of this powder right now. Definitely lit up the center of my face. Definitely. Especially if you have um, dark skin, this could be a really good just like pop right in that inner eye area to just brighten up the rest of the center of your face. I'm not mad at it like this at all, but I could see it as a brightening powder to just pop that center of the face. So I'm gonna go ahead and bronze, Makeup Revolution bronzer. This one I've been using a lot, but we've also got these new mented bronzers I like as well. This one has a little bit more warmth than this one. This, you see how this one's a little bit cooler? This one, or uh, this one's a little bit more neutral. This one adds a little bit more warmth. So I add that as like a last step, almost like a blush. It kind of reminds me of a toned down Fenty Beauty bronzer. And then I'm gonna take the Mented Bronzer. I'm gonna put that in between where I put the Makeup Revolution and my concealer. So, see how I said it's almost like a blush, but it just gives my skin that like nice little pop of warmth. The Dior Forever and Ever Shine Control Powder. It's one of my favorite all over setting powders. Run that through the rest of this face. So I'm gonna take a translucent powder and I'm just gonna cut the cheek. Now I'm gonna go ahead and spray my face down. I have a new setting spray today. This is the Airbrush Flawless Setting Powder from Charlotte Tilbury Party All Night Stay All Day. Super scented. Mm-hmm, a scent. Wow. Okay, Charlotte. This looks good. It's like not too glowy. Charlotte might have just done something. It's taking a second to finish off, but I'm not mad at it. I went ahead and did my brows off camera. So for the eyes, I'm gonna be using the new Pat McGrath Mothership Rose Decadence Palette. Um, I'm actually gonna try and recreate Cardi B's eye makeup in the WAP video, and I actually think I saw somewhere where the makeup artist actually used the new Rose Decadence Palette. I also have the Mothership Divine Rose Palette as well, this one, so I'm gonna use these two together because this one looks like a smaller palette. I already got my eyes primed with some concealer. I'm gonna go into this shade right here. So it seemed like it was a pretty simple pink eye look, so that's what I'm gonna be doing. I'm actually gonna go into this shade right here. This is from the Pure and Robbie De Christie collab. Just cause I need another matte pink, just to really brighten up 
that crease a little bit. The rest of the pinks in the pat palette are shimmers. I'm gonna use those on the lid. The Divine Rose 2 palette, and I'm gonna go into this darker plum shade right here. I'm gonna put some powder down just to protect my base. Let's go into this shade on the outer part of the eye. I'm going back into the plum shade and the Divine Rose, buffing that back into the outer part of the eye. And then going back into Side Effect, the shade. And then I'm gonna go into this shade. It's more of a champagne pink shade right here, this one. And I wanna make sure I marry these two shades together really well. Now, for the last time, we're going back into Side Effect. Going back into this shade, and I'm just gonna blow out that crease right here. On my bottom lash line, I'm gonna go in with my favorite bottom model line liner in Infinite Sands from Makeup Forever. And then I'm gonna go in with the Artist Color Pencil, just like right underneath it right there. And this is in the shade All Over Magenta. I'm using this as like a base, and this is gonna help make it pop. And then I'm going back into that pink shade side effect and I'm just gonna stamp that right there. And then I'm taking this shade just to blend that out. My eye is watering, y'all see that right there? Herb. Okay, so for mascara, I have the Pat McGrath Dark Star Mascara. Little focus, there you go. Dark. This is the newest one. When Pat came out with her first mascara, the fetishized mascara, this one right here, this was my favorite mascara formula for like the longest time. I have tiny baby lashes and they barely show up, but this mascara actually really gives me as much lash as I can get as someone that really doesn't have lashes like that. Like I was not blessed with the lash quantity of most or of some. Fetishized mascara I really like because really all it takes is one coat and you're there. This mascara, um, I noticed that I have to use a few coats. I think it's good because it gives you the flexibility if you wanna do more of a dramatic mascara look versus like a, like a light mascara look. So on my top lashes, I usually go in with one coat. You see, tiny baby lashes. There they are, they're coming. So I usually go in with one coat like that on my top lash because I usually wear falsies. Pat's formula and mascara is really dark, so it really helps to kind of just like really make my lashes show up because they're so tiny. But on my bottom lashes, really, mascara really shines and I, where I can tell if mascara is really good or not. So that's the first layer on my bottom lashes. And like I said, you can leave it like this um, if you wanna do like a light eye look or a light mascara look. I'm gonna go ahead and add one or two more coats after this because I really want it to look really, I want it to match my lashes. So that's why I'm gonna add two more coats. Can you guys see how that's already? See the difference between one layer and two? Yeah. That's what I like. Really build it up to your preference versus like the fetishized mascara. It takes you straight to like three if you like that. I'm actually gonna try and see if I can go in with a little bit more of the Out of Office Bronzer from Mented. Let's see if I can just use that as like a really nice neutral blush. Not neutral, but like a subtle blush. Blush, oh yeah, perfect. Fenty bronzer. I didn't think that it was deep enough to really bronze my skin. It kind of felt more like a blush on me. This is kind of the same thing, but a little bit more muted. So, I'm gonna use my favorite highlighter, the Dior Nude Air Luminizer. I'm 
I'm gonna go ahead and spray my face down one more time. This setting spray, although it looks really good, it makes my face feel a little tight. Like, apply this lipstick. This is from the Lip Fetish Divine Lip Shine in the shade Bella Amour. Pretty shade right there. I wonder if this is a new formula. It smells so good. Yes. That is pretty much it for our look today. I really like the way that this came out. That mascara on my bottom lashes. Oh, it looks so good. So thank you again to Pat McGrath for sponsoring today's video. If you haven't checked out the Dark Star Mascara, make sure you go ahead and check that out. I'll have it down below in the description. As far as the setting powder, honestly, it does not look crazy, you guys. I thought it was gonna look a little bit crazy because it's a little bit lighter than I normally go as like my first setting powder. Normally I go in with like a setting powder that's closer to my concealer. And then if I wanna brighten, I go in with a setting powder kind of similar to the one I used today, but on its own, it doesn't look terrible. It looks really good. I mean, the formula, everyone already loves the Laura Mercier setting powder. So I honestly just wanted to give it a try and see if those of us with a deeper complexion can use it as well. I really hope you guys have enjoyed today's video. If you have, make sure you go ahead and give it a thumbs up somewhere over here. Don't forget to subscribe and turn on your notifications. Thank you guys so much for watching. Lots of love, and I will see you guys next time. What if I did the most and did this gold in the corner? I mean, it's kind of cute.